We welcome you here to a very special program, and this we're calling a Pray TV program, although we know that it goes out through many other opportunities to uh, communicate with you. Uh, Lion of Judah, of course, will be uh, airing it. I know that our guests will be, and, and many others, but I'm Brant Gillespie, and I'm so gl grateful to be here with you again. There's been quite a bit of time has passed hmm. since I've had the opportunity of doing one of these programs. I'm not going to go into all the details about my journey and the journey of my wife Charlotte through this particular phase of our lives. I am going to do that at one point and we're going to sit down and just share Charlotte and I about some of the things that have happened in our lives. But our guest today is Marlene Yo. Marlene, just greet the people and say hi. Thank you for having me. God bless you all. <laughs> <laughs> Marlene, in case you don't know, is really one of the stalwart prophetic voices in New England. Marlene has really led the way. I mean, I, I go back to many years ago where I got to know you up there in Haverhill and God was just using you to open the way with mm -hmm. so many outreaches, so many ways of communicating with, with, with people. And uh, I, I, I don't want to go too far astray from, from where we're going Be on free. this, but, but <laughs> yeah, but, but uh, just share a little bit of the story just for you so you can experience this, the story of what happened there with what was Zion Bible Institute and even before that Bradford College yep, and, yep. And, and it was a wasteland oh. and, and yet you prayed and God brought together different things. Just open that up for that, us just a story. little bit sure, so that we can, sure. we can hear that. So the Ministry of Somebody Cares New England, uh, there's three components of it, prayer, care and share. So we pray for our city. We demonstrate the care of Christ for our city. And we share the good news as God opens doors in our city. So I had invited um, Dr. Doug Stringer, who's the founder of Somebody Cares America International, to come to Haverhill. Um, actually, I think he invited himself is what it was. He said, <laughs> I was going to ask, how, how, you, how did you get to know yeah, him? Yeah, well, it starts with Lou Engel because Lou did the call in 2000 in D.C. It was called the call to prayer and right. fasting. Right. So I was the New Hampshire State mobilizer for the call in 2000. And then he did a call in New York, and that was in 2002. So I was at the call in New York in 2002, and a mutual friend of Doug's, who I also know, said, you need to have lunch with Doug Stringer today, and I've arranged it. And I said, I'm not having lunch with Doug Stringer, because I, he passed out his book, Time to Cross the Jordan, at the call in New York. And this is an author. This is somebody that's known around the world. And I thought, why would I waste his time having lunch with him? So, you know... <laughs> But that's, <laughs> that, yeah. I am like a grasshopper in my own sight. Yeah, I, I, isn't that so true? I mean, yeah. really what you're saying there, mm -hmm. the journey that happens in people's lives right. to discover the call of God that is on us. Right, that, right. You know, like, <laughs> we, can't, we, we can't even imagine You know, I, I like what Dr. Um, Big Pond says, yeah. Ni Nigel Big Pond yes. out in Oklahoma. Yeah. He says, you are like a river that gives me life and without you I cannot exist. Yes. We are interconnected with one another. Our destinies are interconnected. Yes. I can't get where God wants me to be without others along my journey. Yes. And so Doug was one of those. Yes. And so uh, I was on the elevator going to my room. The door opened and there he stood. And he said, I hear we're having lunch today. <laughs> so. I sat, my daughter was there, and Helena, the one that connected us, and Doug said to me, Marlene, tell me what God's doing in your heart and in, in Haverhill. So I began to share with him that ever since I'd watched the transformation video, which is produced by the Otis, uh, George Otis Sentinel Group, mm -hmm. um, ever since I watched that video all by myself in my basement, something happened to me, and I've not been the same since. And I said, basically what it was, was I saw what God did in a community when people invited him in. And I prayed that day from the bottom of my belly 
came mm. out, this mm. groan. Mm. And I said, God, I want to be a part of what you're doing in the nations of the world. And I don't know how you're going to get me connected to what you're doing, but I want to be a part of it. Yeah. And then that's when sovereignly God connected me with Doug, who um, somebody cares, America International. So he came to our city, uh, Haverhill. He walked the streets of our city. And this is what he said to me. He said, Marlene, I discern that the DNA of city transformation is at work in this city. And he said, I just want to serve. I want to serve you and I want to serve what God's doing. How can I serve you? And I said, well, we've been, um, there's an empty Bible college. Well, it wasn't a Bible college. There's an empty school in Bradford called Bradford College. Right. It had started as a girls' school to prepare young ladies for the mission field. As a matter of fact, one of them who graduated from there, a Haverhill girl, her name was Anne Hasseltine, or Hazeltine, depending on who you talk to, she married Adoniram Judson. Mm -hmm. The first missionaries mm -hmm. that were sent from American soil came right from our city. Yeah. And so... And they came from our docks, because we your docks live... after they came from our city. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> right. That's true. And they came by uh, some American Baptist uh, right. mission sending, yep. uh, uh, sending that, unit. And, yep. and, and literally, they, they, they sailed from where Charlotte and I live in Salem. Yeah. And, and we've gone down there on a commemoration for that journey happening. And, and they literally packed their coffins. Right. You know this story, right? I do. They, they took and they put their goods, every earthly worldly goods that they had, all of their, anything that was valuable and precious to them mm -hmm. was packed in a coffin. And they took the coffins and they sailed over. They actually landed in Myanmar now, you know. I mean, it was a circuitous route because they had a couple of other stops there, but that's where they ended Myanmar, up yeah. being and, and doing their life's work and yeah. missions. Yeah. But that kind of dedication, yeah. that kind of oh giving of your lives yeah. to God yeah. and the kingdom of God, yeah. it, it reminds me of, of when Charlotte and I were young and, and we were part of a church organization up in Canada. Actually, we were with the United States organization, but it's a sister organization up in Canada. That, and we come from Canada, so our roots are up there in Canada. And there was this, this man who was the head of the missions movement for that organization in Canada. Mm -hmm. And he told us how that in the 1930s, they were sending missionaries mm -hmm. over to Africa, to India, to Bangladesh, to other areas of, of mm -hmm. the earth. Mm -hmm. And he said he knew that when he said goodbye to them, these were young people that had come up through the Bible colleges. They had studied for the ministry, they'd probably done deputational work, which is going and raising their, their funds to be able to support them. And then they went off into missions. And he said when he would be saying goodbye to them, he knew that 50% of them would die yeah. on the mission field right. of malaria, of other kinds of diseases, mm -hmm. because they didn't have the kinds of things that sustain life in today's terms, you know, and, yeah. and, and we live in this global world now and we kind of know what's going on in many of these other areas and there's the World Health Organization, for good or bad, you know, that, that is there that kind of keeps us abreast of, of these types of things. But, you know, these missionaries mm -hmm. who left our shores have created a legacy right. and you might even speak into that a little bit because I know that there, are, I know we've got another program we're going to be doing later about about the people that are coming from, from Korea, but they, there are people all over the world that look back to America right. and are so thankful yeah. for the missions mm -hmm. and the works of sending the gospel right. there. But our program isn't totally about that, but it is following the Holy Spirit. All we want to do Marlene and I, is seek God, know what he's saying, communicate his heart,
be present to him, be present to you who are watching and viewing, that you could be able to receive mm -hmm. what God wants for you to be able to experience mm -hmm. even right now. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to read the scripture that, that Marlene brought because it really is taking us into the full reason why we are here and why mm -hmm. this particular program is important is because there's something very special that is going to be happening in our state, but it's happening across the states and it's happening on April 13th mm -hmm. here at the State House. Now, I know there's some little variation on the on the time that those things land in in some of the other states because some of the, the states are going to be doing it on say the sunday or 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 whatever but this is the saturday april, april 13th and marlene's going to tell us about this but i'm going to read the scripture uh, that she has brought for us to kind of contemplate and it's from jeremiah chapter 9 verses 17 through 21 and it says this is what the lord says Consider now, call for the wailing women to come. Send for the most skillful of them. Let them come quickly and wail over us till our eyes overflow with tears and water streams from our eyelids. The sound of wailing is heard from Zion. How ruined we are. How great is our shame. We must leave our land because our houses are in ruins. Mm -hmm. Now, you women, hear the word of the Lord. Open your ears to the words of his mouth. Teach your daughters how to wail. Teach one another a lament. Death has climbed in through our windows, has entered our fortresses. It has removed the children from the streets and the young men from the public squares. I mean, this is a heavy, heavy mm -hmm. set of scriptures, but this is something that God, by His Holy Spirit, has been causing mm -hmm. to come about. I, 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 even reading this and then reflecting upon the fact that uh, Marlene and Charlotte and I were out in Colorado Springs just a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And we were at that conference that is called the 222 Conference. And it, it was a place where I, I have personally never, ever experienced what we experienced on that Saturday night. Right. When there was this inability to speak. Dutch Sheets is a master craftsman of the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And he was assigned to speak that night. He couldn't even speak. Mm -hmm. He couldn't even give a message. It was like there was wailing and weeping that was taking place mm -hmm. from the very top floor where Charlotte and I were up in the balcony. We just wanted to be like, like hidden people up in like wallflowers if it was possible to be wallflowers but to be out of active roles just uh god told me to go down and pray at the at, at the altar with some young men and i did that in obedience but generally speaking we were just there experiencing god but the wailing that went on for three hours mm -hmm. at least just prayer mm -hmm. and agony of soul yeah Marlene, you brought the scripture. Please speak into this and, yep. and share with us what's going to be happening on April 13th. What's happening at the mm -hmm. State House? Mm -hmm. why, why are we calling for this wailing mm -hmm. to happen? So I mentioned when I watched the transformation video that something from deep within came out in, in prayer and intercession. So there's a difference. Uh, this isn't uh, a negative. This is identifying. We, I can identify that most of the prayer meetings that we have in New England are people that sincerely love God, really want to see God move, but we pray a lot of mental ascent prayers, things that we know. We pray what we know. It's common. It's, it's just part of being human. 
when intercession comes on you, it's not praying what you know, it's praying what God knows. It comes from a different place. It doesn't come from the head. It doesn't even come from the emotion. It comes from deep within. So when the Bible talks about groaning and wailing and, and just this form of intercession that is not something that is we've seen very much. It, that's what we experienced out in Colorado Springs. Right. Right. So that's what happened to me in 1999 when I watched the transformation video. And I didn't have anybody that helped me to understand what happened to me. My whole life changed. The trajectory of my life changed from that moment. And I'm still on the path mm -hmm. of what God did in 1999 through that video. And the connections, the relationships, the things that I'm involved in, the ways that God will use me to open a door like the Koreans coming, open a door like, for instance, when I was the New Hampshire State Mobilizer for the call DC in 2000, that was a door that God opened for me. I'm not opening these doors, God mm -hmm. is opening them. Mm -hmm. And the reason that he opens doors for certain people isn't because they're anything to write home about. It's not because of them. It's because they made themselves available in the secret place. That's it. David, after he was anointed king, didn't get on a horse and ride to Jerusalem and say, whoever was on the throne, get off because I've just been anointed king. He went back to shepherding the sheep mm -hmm. and singing songs and inventing instruments to worship God. So what we do in the secret place, what we do before God is what opened doors for us. And if we will come low before the Lord, even like this being a state captain for the state of Massachusetts for this movement that's happening across the whole nation on April 13th, which has really been um, an, a culmination of two prophetic voices in our nation, one being Lou Engel, mm -hmm. um, had a dream from God, and God showed him uh, a million women at the mall DC to pray for our nation, which is gonna happen in October. We're gonna show a video of that. And Jenny Donnelly, who God independently spoke, they didn't know each other, spoke to Jenny and said, there's going to be a million women that are gonna to go to the mall to pray for this nation. So Jenny was sharing her uh, dream with people that she knew and Lou's sharing his dream. God sovereignly crossed their paths for them to be able to connect together. And so Jenny is really doing what's called her voice movement. And Lou is doing what's called the Esthers are arising. So Esther is a woman and so Esther, as we know the story in the book of Esther, it was because her as an orphan, Mordecai took her in as his own. It was not his child. It, it, was, he, it was his brother's, his uncle's child. It wasn't even his brother, it was his uncle's child. Took her in as his own, cared for her. And when it came time that the king was searching for a new queen, he said to Esther, how do you know yet if this is such for such a time as this that you've been brought into the kingdom? It was because of his counsel that set her in the place mm -hmm. to be the voice. Mm -hmm. So it's we would call Lou Engel such as Mordecai and his counsel to the women of the nation. God is calling you. We want to put you out front as the women of intercession to pray for this nation. So it was at a conference at Cheyenne's church in California that they were ordaining Jenny Donnelly as an apostolic prophetic voice to the nation. And so Lou was at this same uh, apostolic gathering. And so that's when they met and they had be able, were able to share. Well, Lou Engel um, has been uh, traveling the nation as well as Jenny Donnelly and sharing about this vision for this a million women at the mall. And that doesn't exclude men. It, 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 it includes the Mordecais and it includes the children to all come to the mall. But why well, are they- Well, I'm gonna be there. <laughs> <laughs> why are they why are they saying the Estes? Why are they saying her voice movement? Yeah. Is because in uh, 1997, Promise Keepers gathered over a million men to pray at the mall. I was there. And then in 2000, uh, through the call to in uh, DC in 2000, there were 450,000 young people that yes. were there praying. Yes. So now it's God's calling the women, not yes. not independent from the uh, you know the, the men and the children, but that there's an emphasis. Women, it's time for you to come and pray and weep before the Lord on behalf of this nation. And so that scripture verse that you read, um, Jeremiah 9, it says, call for the wailing women. Now, we're not talking about women that turn the tears on like in the movies. Oh, let's, let's cry now because yeah. we're praying. No, it's not, a, it's not that at all. It is a moving on the inside of your being and from a place in the spirit that comes through your emotion 
Um, and it doesn't even involve your intellect. Mm -hmm. It's not about what you know. We pray all the time, God, we don't want to pray what we know. We want to pray what you know. I don't want to pray what the media is talking about. Mm -hmm. I want to pray, what does God say about the situation? Yeah. Because from God's perspective, it's very different. And, you know, we had mentioned that scripture verse earlier in Numbers about we are like grasshoppers in their sight. Mm -hmm. And so are we in their sight like grasshoppers. We can see ourselves as minimal, insignificant, uh, not important. It doesn't matter. Our voice doesn't matter. And that's where a lot of women are. Oh, because a lot of men too. A lot of men too as yeah, well. And yeah. there is this uh, abuse that happens between men and women that has caused both of them to come to a place of being silent instead of coming together, being healed, and being one voice for the nation. So I feel like God is just like after us. Yeah, He's like after yeah. us and He is relentless on bringing us to a place of healing and deliverance so that together we can go and our voice can be lifted up. That's another thing, too. When I was speaking with um, uh, Dr. Yim, uh, I was saying to him, it's amazing when the Koreans came just to talk about how they pray. They lift up their voice together as one. <laughs> In America, or I should say Western culture, Christianity, we let one person pray and the rest of us are quiet and we nod our heads kind of like, yes, amen, right, but we don't right, say anything. Right. And so I said to Dr. Yim, you know, it's amazing how they pray. He said, but they pray like they do because the missionaries that came from America taught them to pray like that. And we've lost that. We've lost it. Yeah. We've lost the lift up your voice like a trumpet. Let your voice be heard in the public square. And, we have and, become and silent. And it's really to do with understanding yeah. that God works in the community mm -hmm. and that we are bonded together, we are knit right. together, and people, you have got to get this. God has got to awaken this yes. in us. He's got to is that it. it's, it's really, we think we are insignificant because we think that we are small in the scope of things. The reality is we are vital Absolutely. members of the body of Christ. And if you don't realize and recognize your vitality, you're missing understanding. Uh, and I could go on and I could get to preaching here and I don't want to do that, but I'm feeling such urgency in my spirit because this is what brings, there are many things that the enemy uses to bring limitations on us. Right makes us feel insignificant because of things of the past or things that we failed in or et cetera, et cetera. He just wants to put that in front of us and he wants to beat us up with it again and again. That's one of the ways. But many of the ways that, that the enemy works against us is because he causes us to look at ourselves yeah. as though I'm just, I'm, I'm just, a sim simple human being. I, I really don't have much to offer or much to bring. And and even though in a certain sense there's something true about that, sure. there is a limit that yeah. is it, it puts on people that is not to do with your calling. Yeah. God has called you to greatness. He's yes, called he you to authority. Yes. He's called you to be a voice in the wilderness. Right. He's calling us to be able to rise up and, and to go to the state house. Right. And, and people say, well, why should I go to the state house? What, what? Mm -hmm. I don't have anything to say. I don't have any. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. Your presence being there Absolutely. makes a world of difference. Absolutely. And we just have got to receive mm -hmm. the anointing that God wants to deposit on us mm -hmm. and to send us out. And so can we be back from going further and, 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 and getting off to preaching? I'm going to just introduce that video with Lou Engle talking about the million women. Mm -hmm. Amen. Go ahead and play that. In 1997, an extraordinary event took place. A million and a quarter men, promise keepers, gathered to the mall in Washington, D.C. to pray for this nation. That on September 2nd, the year 2000, 450,000 young people primarily gathered to fast and pray for 12 hours. Out of Promise Keepers came this movement called The Call, and for 24 years, there have been gatherings in stadiums and arenas across the nation and in the nations of the earth that I believe 
has been mounting up a prayer storm that maybe now we will begin to see the answer to those cries. And then 2017, I had a dream. And in that dream, as far and wide as I could see, women were coming everywhere to hear the book of Esther be taught. I'm the only man in that crowd with my assistant. He gives me an old Bible. It's the call of Mordecai to mobilize what I'm looking at. The movement was filled with a sense of revival. And in the dream, a woman stands up and she says these two words in the book of Esther actually mean Nazgul. I exploded out of the dream instantly knowing what it meant because I watched the third part of the Lord of the Rings where the Nazgul witch king is destroying the armies of men and he says, no man can kill me. But the king's daughter takes off her helmet, lets her hair down and says, I am no man. And she pierces the Nazgul witch king. I wake up and I know the Lord is saying, there is coming a righteous women's movement that is going to gain authority in America over principalities and powers, ideologies that are seeking to destroy the children of this nation. Then I begin to hear of this Her Voice movement, the woman named Jenny Darnley, and she was hearing about what I was calling for. And we joined together in 2022. We began dreaming about a million women on the mall in DC. The movement was initiated. And now we have come to 2024 and we're calling a million women to the mall in D.C. to finish what was started. Esther was raised up at a time that if there wasn't a ship, they would lose the whole nation. We're calling every man of Mordecai, every woman in Esther, come to the mall on the Day of Atonement and dare to believe that God will shift history, save a nation as we pray, fast, and stand on behalf of the children your families, and your nation. So on this day of atonement, where the blood of Jesus is applied to the doorposts of our national guilt, you've come to the defining moment, just like Esther was brought to a defining moment. Will you be there? And you'll say to your children and your grandchildren, we were there when God gathered the Esthers and saved a nation. Don't miss this defining moment for such a time as this, you've been brought into the kingdom. Marlene, this is so important. And I just ask that you would maybe just speak into it and then begin to lead us in prayer yeah, yeah. about what is coming. Yeah. What's coming April 13th, mm -hmm. what is coming October 12th. Yes. Amen. So that video was about October 12th at our capital in the, in the nation, down in Washington, D.C. And so I know that many people may say, well, you know what, I live far away. That means air travel, it means hotel, it means yeah. all the expense about yeah. that. How much is it worth? Uh, well, I'm gonna say for Charlotte and I, it's worth any expense. Right. I mean, literally, this yeah. is, what I see is that the mall October 12th, Day of Atonement, is the altar. Yeah, it's the altar. And we are the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And we are going to lay our lives down yeah. Yeah. along with a million women and men yeah. to be able to just say, God, God. we are the yeah. living sacrifice. Yeah. Because we're the body of Christ. Right. We are the body right. of Christ. And so, yeah. anyway. And I, God's, God's ways are fasting and prayer yeah. and standing. Let's yeah. come stand together. Yeah. Let's do this together. I mean, we, I know that there'll be people watching it, you know, on, uh, after it's over, you know, on TV or whatever. I don't know if they're live streaming it that day or not. But I, but I know this. There's something about being present. Yes. You know, there's something that happens when we're together. Yeah. And all I know is this. You know, God is omnipresent. He's everywhere at all times. But I love the manifest presence of God. Amen. When you can sense his presence, when you, the, when the tangible presence of Christ 
is with us. That's the difference. And it resides on bodies, on in, bodies people, in people, in relationships. And, right. and literally, we will be standing there. I don't know if I'll be standing right next to you or you'll be, you know, uh, 100 yards or, or 300 yards away. But, but we, the we'll body of Christ, will be standing yeah. together. Yeah. And that's where yeah. that presence yeah. of the manifest presence of Christ comes because right. he dwells in a location. Right. He dwells in a people, in a body that gathers at a place, at a time. At a time. And this is the time. Yeah. So let's just pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that instead of people thinking about what it will cost them yes. or thinking about the inconvenience of travel, Father, may their faith rise up and say, Lord, I want to be there. I want to be a part of what you're doing in the nation. I want to be a part on that day that my name would be written mm -hmm. in the book of that day of being present in faith and believing yes. you that you can save a nation. You can. Your word says, can a nation be saved in a day? And yes. our answer is yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. A nation can be saved in a day. Mm. And Father, I know from watching the transformation videos, when I watched presidents and kings of countries repenting for the sin of their nation, God, you mm -hmm. changed the nation because of one day of prayer. When one people would stand together in one accord under one name, the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, you yes. changed nations. And so, God, I'm asking that you will do the same for America. God, the determination in your heart to save a nation, let your people now rise up in agreement Amen. with what's in your heart for this nation. Amen. Lord, I ask it in Jesus' name. And would you bring the wailing women? Would you bring those, God, that have yes, been interceding God. in the secret place, in their prayer closet, on the mountainside? They've been in the valley. They've been in the hard places. And the, a song has come from their lips, not wailing as in self-pity, but intercession and shedding tears of intercession yes. because death has climbed in through our windows. Yeah. God, we are seeing all across our nation the yes. decree of the enemy to bring death to this generation. But God, I thank you. You give us the authority to reverse Haman's decree. Mm -hmm. You give us the authority, Lord, mm -hmm. to speak a thing and it shall be if we pray it and say it according to your word. Yes. And God, we know that according to your word, God, that you want to save a nation. Yes. So Lord, would you come and would you bring your people, would they come and gather together on that day, on the Day of Atonement, when the blood is shed and God oh, and put upon the Lord. doorpost. God, would you pass yes. over America on yes. that day? Would you pass yes, over Lord, us, God? Do it, God. Father, we ask it in the name of Jesus and we cry out for your mercy, Amen. Father, for America. Amen. We ask for your mercy, God, for the Hallelujah. sins of this nation. And Lord, that yeah. on that day that we yes, will stand Lord. and ask forgiveness yes. on behalf yes. of the legislators yes. in this nation, God, that have legislated bloodshed, mm, mm, that have legislated mm, laws that mm, have caused our children mm, to become in encapsulated with this demonized thinking of, of same-sex agenda. Lord, I ask in the name of oh, Jesus God. that you would reverse the curse and bring about salvation in America. Yes, and Lord. those, Lord, that have been entrenched in a lifestyle, God, of the LGBTQ God, and they don't know who they are. They yeah. don't know that you created them male and female. They don't know, God. Jesus. And as Jesus said on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they don't know yes. what they do. They don't know, Lord, yes. unless you come, they're not gonna know. Yes, unless God. you pull back the veil that's over their hearts oh, and over their minds God. and over their life, God, they cannot know. Lord, would you bring salvation to a people that have been beguiled by witchcraft. God, would you bring oh. salvation to them, Lord? Have mercy on us, O oh God. Have mercy on the child in the womb, God. Have mercy on them, Father. And God, may all the innocent bloodshed that cries mm. out to you day and night, God, may you bring vindication. Yes. May you bring vengeance, God, yes. upon the enemies that are your enemies, Lord. We don't call people our enemies. Father, the Amen. principalities and the powers that are ruling God over this nation because of ignorance. God, I ask in the name of Jesus for you to bring justification for the bloodshed that's happened in this nation. Jesus. Lord, in Jesus' name we ask it. Father, we just thank you that this is accomplished. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are going before. Go before us, Lord. Lord, Send our name. You are Ministry literally drawing men and women out of hidden places. Yes, Lord. You are taking people who have felt like for their lives 
it's over. They feel like I'm too old. I have spent my life. It's over. I have no more strength and no more courage. Lord, you are taking the grandmothers and the grandfathers. You are taking the mothers and the fathers. You are taking the children. And Father, we just praise you, even as Lou was here just a couple of weeks ago and praying over those children, God. Lord, what a release of your anointing. And Father, we praise you that this is what you are doing. It is what you are accomplishing. And Lord, we know, God, that you are changing the earth before our very eyes. Father, we need it. This earth needs to be transformed. It needs the change. And Father, you're being faithful to do it and to bring this life. Father, we just praise you and we thank you for it. We believe that the assignment has gone out. Lord, I pray that you will give people a yes in their hearts to receive the new assignment, the new anointing, the fresh oil, because this earth needs to see the power of the risen Christ, not just parroting verses of scripture, not just praying prayers that are perfunctory prayers that are are proper lord we're not against proper prayers but father we are asking lord that you will stir Stir. in the heart of men and women everywhere an anointing must rise from this generation it must rise it must cry out Abba, Father, we yield to you. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to come and to refresh us, to come and empower us, to come and literally impregnate us with your vision, with your heart. Father, I know that this is going to bring life and release. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you for this, Lord. We thank you for this. And I I, I just want to, be, before we just even open it up to this other aspect, we began to address it a little bit about meeting on the steps mm. of the state houses yeah. Yeah. on April 13th. Right. And God, I, I'm just going to read this scripture It's from Isaiah chapter 62, verses 6 and 7. I have posted watchmen Mm. on your walls, Jerusalem. Mm. They will never be silent, day or night. You who call on the Lord, give yourselves no rest and give him no rest till he establishes Jerusalem. Mm and makes her the praise of the earth. And we know that that is a scripture very literally about Jerusalem, the city. But we also know that it is speaking of the places that are the seats of government, where decisions are made, where Votes are cast in the case of these democratic societies that we live in. And we know how much manipulation goes on in and around these things. And, and, but ultimately, we are the government. This is a government of the people, by the people. The elected representatives are representing the body politic. And that is a reflection of all of the peoples of, in this case, the state of Massachusetts, where we are right now and where we are living. Mm -hmm. And the other states around New England all have their places of governance. And the, the manifestation of the body politic. Now, we're talking about the body of Christ, but there's this body politic. Mm -hmm. It is, it's dissimilar, but it is somewhat similar. 
we think in terms of the ecclesia, the church of Jesus Christ, the body of Christ that is manifest in the governmental sense, uh, that, that is able to move literally governments of the earth, but we've got to be able to begin to marshal our own anointing as the body of Christ mm -hmm. to be able to be present because we have disassociated ourselves. Yes. We have felt like we're yeah. impoverished, <laughs> we're imperiled, we have no strength, we have no voice and no impact because we have believed the lie. Believe the lie. We have believed the lie. Mm -hmm. And God is saying to us, Church of Jesus Christ, I have called you to arise. I have called you to stand. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it came down to this one moment in one woman's life in particular and how she just felt in her spirit. No more. Mm -hmm. You can't have our kids. Right. And I, I'd just like for you just to open sure. this up and, and, sure. and share about that and then yeah. share the video as well. Yep, so Jenny Donnelly is really who God's used to start this tagline, which is don't mess with our kids. And there's a website, it's the same as that, but .us, so don't mess with our kids .us. And this lady has done a tremendous job of really empowering women to recognize that we are watchmen on the wall, we have a voice and we have authority from Christ. Yes. Not, to, not to like Judas, or Peter wield the sword, you know, yeah, to, to do yeah, that kind yeah. of, uh, you know, physical, you know, dominance. It's not a physical dominance, it's spiritual dominance. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget the day I was standing in my office window, just looking out the window down the street casually. And I looked on one of our signs on the phone pole was Washington Street. On the other sign on the phone pole was Shepherd Street. And the Lord said to me, I've given you governmental authority and spiritual authority. And I've placed you here for such a time as this. And I thought, Lord, how do I have governmental authority? I'm not a legislator. I'm not any of those things. I mean, but we have governmental authority by our vote. Yeah. And when we ever heard when we were out at the 222, his name was Mark Gonzalez. Mm -hmm. And so the Hispanic Action Network. Mm -hmm. And he said across the nation, 6% of people that go to church vote. Unbelievable. 6% of people vote. They're advocating their place of authority to influence government legislation. They've advocated. I mean, ad, but ad, that word. Abdicated. Thank you. <laughs> right. So there is a movement that's happening. The Spirit of the Lord is doing it through people like Jenny Donnelly of saying to women, listen, you have to, you have to get out of the four corners of your little house and your little church, and you've yes. got to come to the public square because God has called you. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. Jesus said, greater things will you do because I go to the Father. Yeah. We never think of ourselves as doing anything greater. What can you do greater than Jesus? But he didn't mean greater than him. You're going to do greater things than you've ever dreamed of doing. Mm -hmm. Because in his gentleness, this is scripture in, in Psalms, I forget which chapter and verse, look it up. In his gentleness, he has made us great. Yeah. Not because of ourselves, but because of who's living inside of us. Yeah. And he's called us to do great things. Mm -hmm. So this Jenny Donnelly, she's mobilizing the nation the, among the women and holding conferences and just, and it's called Don't Mess With Our Kids. Right. Actually, I have a t-shirt here. I just want to hold it up <laughs> because one of the things that she said, she's been mobilizing through Zoom calls and it's Don't Mess With Our Kids, but also on the front, it says Her Voice Movement. Uh -huh. And that, that's not excluding men, as we know. Um, but this is what she said. Everybody needs to wear a T-shirt on the day of. Why? Because look at how the world identifies themselves through color. Yeah. Listen, I'm up on the hill in Haverhill, um, and the hill is called the hill because it's where the gangs live, up on top of the hill. And so they're identified by their colors. You know, we identify nations by the color of our flag. You know, we identify a child when it's born with a pink blanket if it's a girl mm -hmm. and a blue blanket if it's mm -hmm. a boy, right? And that's the colors that have been chosen, pink and blue, because God created them male and female. There are two genders. Yes. Male and female. Mm -hmm. Now, the confusion among the genders, we have compassion for people in that confusion. Yes, we we're do. not pointing fingers, we're not blaming, we're not cursing them, we're, we're loving them to life, right? right? So That's I understand there needs right. to be legislation to protect people from cruelty and abuse, absolutely 100%. God is, uh, is for that. Mm -hmm. But we can't play the game that Satan's playing on people to confuse them in their identity. So basically we're wearing colors on that day, 
of blue and and I almost pink. said yellow, <laughs> pink, <laughs> blue and pink. <laughs> right, and right. so we're identifying that we're we're one people created by God, male and female. And so it's important. So we do have T-shirts that are for sale. Lion of Judah has some. I have some. Right. It, you can order online from Jenny Donnelly's ministry, but if you buy from us, it, you don't pay the shipping and handling. Uh, so. It is important on that day that we're identified by the colors. Yeah, and, and please make sure you get your, your T-shirts because uh, we ran out of the extra large, which I need. We have more. <laughs> she just picked them up. Oh, good. Yeah, they're well, at the I'm going to get my extra large. Yes. And hopefully I won't stay extra large all the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> so but. on the day of April 13th, so let me just read this to you. This is, this is the, t the kind of the layout of the day. We're going to start out with the blowing of the shofar, which yes. is just amazing. Um, and then we have uh, YWAM Boston's going to be leading worship, which I'm excited about. We have Apostle Najim coming. He's going to be leading us in repentance and communion. Yes. So his church has donated 500 communion cups. Yes. Um, if we have more people than that, I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe we share, we break the them. bread. <laughs> you can bring them. <laughs> we can um, bring them from the Lion of Judah. <laughs> but it's important, that, it's important that we take communion that day together, as yes. we will do also at the Washington uh, D.C. gathering. The reason for the communion is this. There has been innocent bloodshed across this nation of the unborn. There has been innocent bloodshed of people. Um, the, you know, it, I don't want to get into it. You, you watch the news, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. More than just the unborn. Yeah. But we need to take communion and ask God's forgiveness for the innocent bloodshed that's, that's been done in this nation. And as we repent and we start out with repentance and with worship and with um, communion, then we're going to go into the other segments. We're going to pray for the unborn. Uh, we're going to pray for marriage. We're going to pray for the LGBTQ community. We're going to pray for education for college campuses and high school. We're going to pray for government. We're going to pray for the media. We're going to pray for peace in the Middle East. We're going to pray for America as a nation. We're going to pray for the church. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to have Massachusetts Family Institute there to be able to have a table to help people to put their faith in action. Amen. They've been wonderful oh, on educating so the body of Christ. Good. It's Thank God for Michael King and for all of those at Mass Family Institute. We're yeah. so grateful for them. So it's going to be an amazing day. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to it. So we went to the state capitol today just to pray and to um, introduce ourselves to the, the police that mm -hmm. we're going to be there on that day and to let them know that we're there to pray for our nation. Awesome. So it's going to be a wonderful time. And you have a little card there that you yes. wanted to... Well, this is a million women. Yeah. And... Um, this is the card. So there's a there's a um, a QR code. If you go on the website amillionwomen.org, you'll get the information. Register for that day, and also to register for April 13th, you know need to go on don't mess with our kids. Us and register for the day of coming to the state capitol to pray that day as well. Well, these are very vital and important mm -hmm. things for us to do, and it gives us an opportunity to be able to put our faith into action. Right. You know, faith without works, according to James, is what? Dead. Dead. Faith without works is? Dead. Dead. And God doesn't want us to be having as the record of our lives dead works. That's right. God wants live works. Mm -hmm. He wants to invigorate you to be able to put life, there is life in you, but that life in you needs an expression. Right. And that life in you is going to receive that release and that expression. So this video of Jenny Donnelly sharing the mission and the vision that God's given her regarding rallying together her voice movement, it's, gonna, it's a great video that will inspire you. 2021, my hometown of Portland, Oregon was being destroyed. Churches and businesses shut down. Children and families were required to cover their mouths and no one could go into the city after 5 p.m. because it was too dangerous. This violence raged in our city for over 180 days straight. It was as if we were waiting for evil just to give up, but this isn't how it works. The Bible says in Genesis 1:28 that we are to fill the earth and govern it. Evil will take up the space that we, who know God, choose not to fill. In the midst of feeling rather overwhelmed by the decay of the nation, I asked God to put me in the fight. And then I asked this important question, what is it going to take, God, for the church to stand up and fight for what is right? And here's what he said. 
when they take your kids. I was totally riveted by this. It rocked me to my core. I didn't know then what he was referring to, but I do now. One in five Gen Z self-identify as LGBTQ. There are states right now that are proposing laws to legalize kidnapping when parents refuse to affirm their child's gender transition. History tells us that when evil leaders want to control a nation, they go after our kids. It's time for us to awaken and take our place on this battlefield for revival and reformation in our nation. The arrows of the enemy are aimed at your children, your grandchildren, and the young ones who will carry the leaders of our nation. Don't mess with our kids. So all it takes for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. We need to rise up as the body of Christ and say, you know what, even if it doesn't touch you personally, what's going on in the nation, you have, to, you have to be awakened to what's happening and that there really is legislation that is being passed that will take children out of the home of parents who do not affirm that child's gender preference. This is serious times. And so I pray that we've been inspired and that we've been activated, not just to pray, but to take action. And I tell you, if we don't take action, right. then the blood of this generation will yes. be on our hands yeah. as well. Yeah. And this is so serious. So serious. So serious. As we kind of come to the end of this particular program, that the anointing of lively works will be your portion yes. that you will carry into eternity. You know, there is coming a day when all of our works will be judged. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about the great white throne judgment where the people who will be assigned to their choice of their rebellious decision to not serve God will be gone into eternity lost and those who are following Christ and have claimed him are moved into the heavenly realms I'm talking about the judgment for believing Christians, the judgment where our works will be judged, where what we have brought mm -hmm. as our offering from our lives will be presented before Jesus. And some of those things are going to be wood, hay, and stubble, mm -hmm. and they're going to be consumed. They're going to be discarded. They're going to have no value. You're going to have nothing to be able to yeah. offer to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords from the years of your life yeah. that you have sojourned here. But then there are going to be other works, good works, the Bible says, that are of gold and of silver and of precious stones. These are things that are symbolic of lively works of faith, yes. works that we have done, not like we're trying to do something to get brownie points or get in good with God. None of that. That doesn't count. That's wood, hay, and stubble. Yeah, that's wood, hay, and stubble. But the kind of works that is hearing his voice, mm -hmm. obeying his word, mm -hmm. doing your assignment, yes. walking into your future, carrying the mantle that God has given you to carry. You say, you look over here at Marlene Yo, and she's carrying many mantles. Well, she just put herself in a place where God could give those to yeah, her. Yeah. She didn't hide from them. I want to be like this lady. <laughs> <laughs> I do. She's a model. Lou Engel is a model. Other people are models. And maybe for some, even I might be a little model. It doesn't matter. That's it's like all we want to do is we want yeah. to hear God's voice, yeah. allow his word to speak That's into right. us the very thing he wants for yeah. us to yes. do. He's got a work for you to do. Part of that work may manifest this April 13th. Yeah. We invite you. Yeah. And, and, and listen, if God is not calling you to do it and you're sincerely praying about it and you have a different assignment, because there are different things that are going on on yes. that very day. Yes. You need to not be 
swayed by my voice or, or Marlene's words or our sense of urgency or even this program. You need to get before the Lord yeah. and say, Amen. Jesus, how do you want me to serve you yeah. every day? And how do you want me to serve you, particularly on this April 13th day and this October 12th day? Mm -hmm. Just obey the Lord. Just obey the Lord. Amen. 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 Why don't you just pray and then I'll just give a little closing prayer and, and, uh, and we'll go from there. Okay. Father, I pray that people would not see themselves as insignificant, but God, that they would begin to see that deposited within each and every one of us is that precious, yes. beautiful presence of Jesus Christ. Lord, there are things that you have for every one of us as an assignment while we live out the days of our life on this earth. And God, there are many assignments depending on the season and time of our life. But God, I pray that in this season, those that hear your voice and know your name, God, that they would be obedient to what it is that you speak to them. Father, I think of little Samuel as a little boy heard your voice and didn't understand it was you. And when he went to Eli, and he thought Eli had called him. And Eli said, no, say, speak, Lord, for your servant listens. God, if we would just stop from our busyness and stop in our racing of our mind and just rest in your presence and just ask, Lord, what do you have for me? Because I want to be a part of what you have for me. And Lord, many of us have done many things because of our own need, not because of being led by the Spirit, because of our own imagination or our own mindsets, but not because of the Spirit of God. Lord, would you teach us in this hour to be those that hear your voice and another's we will not follow, to be those that would discern the moving of the Holy Spirit and follow after you, Lord, regardless of what it costs us and regardless of what it looks like and regardless, Lord, of the opinions of man. Lord, would you do something in us that is so real and so strong yes. and so beautiful that God, you would be honored, that you would be glorified in each one of our lives. Lord, we ask it in the precious name of Jesus, for we know, Lord, the hour is late, the time is short. And Lord, may we be like those that were called in that last hour, that we worked in your vineyard, we worked in your kingdom, and we did things according to your blueprint and your plan, Lord. And God, would you teach us? Lord, we sit at the feet of Jesus and we ask, Holy Spirit, would you come and teach us? Teach us not only the word, but God's ways. Like Moses prayed, God, teach me your ways. Mm -hmm. God, your ways are far mm -hmm. above our ways. Your thoughts are far above our thoughts. So Lord, we're asking God for us to have your thoughts and to know your ways and follow after you with a whole heart in Jesus' name. Father, I just thank you that this is for some a way of reconnecting mm. with the call that you have put on their yes, lives. Lord. Yes, Lord. And Father, we just say, welcome. Welcome into service. Welcome into re-enlisting because it's almost as though you've been soldiers in waiting, but you've been a long time waiting, so long waiting, you feel like you've been inactive in God saying, I want you to re-engage because you're going to be in service in the Lord's army yes. to do the work of the kingdom in this day and time. Yes, Lord. Your commander in chief is waiting for you to say yes. Amen. Amen. And God bless you.